Welcome to the 2014 North American Monsoon Outlook for Central and Northern New Mexico. My name is Andrew Church. I'm a meteorologist at the National Weather Service in Albuquerque. Put together this analysis based on not only the interest in what the upcoming monsoon looks like, but also knew that it would be at least much more straightforward with the developing El Nino. Wanted to show what previous El Nino years were like, at least the the weak to moderate to strong El Ninos. This plot on the top left shows the equatorial Pacific Ocean. It's a vertical view of the subsurface temperature anomalies. So below the ocean surface about 100 to 150 meters or 3 to 500 feet below the surface. Temperatures started out in late February, early March, well above average in the western Pacific Ocean that has since propagated or moved to the east and is now in the upwelling phase of the Kelvin wave that generated this warming. So you see some slight weakening or decrease in the well above average temperature anomalies, but it's very similar to what was observed in the spring of 1997 as well as the spring of 1982. 1997, they actually were the two strongest on record. 97 was slightly stronger than the 1982 event. So I wanted to look back and see, well, what did 1997 and 1982 look like if we were looking at the potential of a strong El Nino, even though most of the models were saying, well, it's going to be moderate. And we'll... We'll see, but the at least the initial conditions look a lot like the two strong years, subsurface conditions, that is. 1997, every site was above average in central and northern New Mexico that had good precipita precipitation data with very little missing data. 1982, slightly different. Some areas, such as Albuquerque, were below average. And one of the reasons I think that was the case is that the the far... Eastern Pacific Ocean, the Baja area, was during 1982, at least during the spring and summer months, slightly below average. That's the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. So it's an oscillation that occurs along the west coast of North America. The warm phase temperatures are above average along the west coast. The cool or negative phase temperatures are near to slightly below average, really slightly below average the 30-year base period, which is, I believe for this image was 1980, no, excuse me, 1971 to 2000. But if you look at the values, uh, PDO values for January, February, March, and April of 2014, 0 0.3, 0 0.38, 0 0.97, 1.13 for this year, compare those to 1997, very similar values compare them to 1982 and you start to see differences. So the the Baja, the far eastern Pacific Ocean, a source region for monsoon moisture, the ocean temperatures were not as warm as they are currently and were in 1997. In 1982, could be one explanation for some areas being below average. Uh, there are many other explanations uh, that I won't cover here. A current look, or the most current look as of March 24th, I'm, excuse me, May 24th of 2014, showing the above average in the far northeast Pacific, the northeast quadrant of the Pacific Basin, along the North American coast, west coast, you see the above average temperature anomalies, uh, exactly where the PDO is above average, or a warm phase of the PDO along the west coast. And then the signature, classic El Nino signature there starting to appear off the Peruvian and Ecuadorian coast to South America. And that's that subsurface, the warmer than average temperature starting to surface uh, there where the black arrow is pointing toward. So we're starting to see signs that uh, this El Nino is similar to 1997 and 82 getting underway pretty rapidly and it uh, looks like by midsummer it should be well underway based on current observations. So I decided to look back at all the years where we had values in the equatorial Pacific Ocean 
that were weak to mo defined as weak to moderate, moderate or strong. So those, we talked about the two strong El Nino events in 1997 and 1982. Then the weak to moderate, two moderate events were 2009, 2006, 2002, 1991 and 1986. And the, the main takeaway here is that all these sites were above average, if not well above average, their 30 year climatological average during the climatologically wettest period of the monsoon season, July 1st through September 15th. And again, the green stands out. That's above average. That far left column uh, is the 1981 to 2010 average and most sites well above average during that time with 1991 and 1986 standing out uh, with most sites double their seasonal average uh, for that time of year. If you average out all those, the weak to moderate to moderate and strong El Nino years and compare that to the 30 year average at each site, most sites were close to double the 30 year average. So we've done well in the past monsoon seasons or climatologically wettest period of the monsoon when the Pacific basin was warmer than average. Both primarily when the PDO was in a warm phase or what we're kind of currently seeing now as well as and so are the El Nino Southern Oscillation uh, was developing. So again, a look back to 1997. Uh, this is August 14th, an image. You can see the equatorial Pacific Ocean well above average, classic El Nino signature there in the map. And then also a classic PDO, warm phase of the PDO along the west coast of North America, above average temperatures. And we love to see during the monsoon season the warmer than average sea surface temperatures surrounding the Baja. I have to add another arrow. That's another key component, it's source region for monsoon moisture. The other black arrow in the Gulf of Mexico showing that what was similar in 1982, the data suggests there's no plots that I could find. The data suggests though that the, not suggests, the data indicates that the Gulf of Mexico was above average by August of 1982, very similar here to 1997. Again, another source region for monsoon moisture. If we get some easterly waves that come up from the Gulf of Mexico that develop on the south side of that subtropical high that sets up over the southern United States, we can pull up some of that moisture as well. Again, just adding to the available moisture for any sort of flow with the southerly component to bring northward into the state. What about June? Lots of questions about kind of the short term. Are we going to get any short term relief? from the drought? The answer is maybe. Uh, it's it's unclear. A lot of times what happens in the month of June, the subtropical high is just starting to get underway as we're seeing now. And we get this anomalously strong closed upper low over the Pacific Northwest or off the Pacific Northwest coast that develops. So there's a strong southwesterly flow over the desert southwest and that can bring in a drier air. Uh, kind of what we're seeing in the the short-term forecast here. Early next week, it looks like a first week in June could be uh, on the dry side with this strong southwest flow, dry and breezy side. Uh, what about temperatures? You look here on the left, look at the years. This is just the June to August temperature, kind of the summer by definition, meteorological summer by definition, June through August slightly below average in the west and above average in the east. And then when we look at the the monsoon season, uh, climatologically wettest period July through September, we see that we're below average uh, throughout the state, in fact. Lots of text here. The main takeaway here is that when the entire Pacific Ocean Basin is, is warm, we do well. Um, typically during with precipitation during the monsoon. Early onset is key. There were some, for example, 2004, where El Nino started rather late in the spring, uh, never really developed into much of anything. It remained weak, and it was a 
a monsoon season that uh, was rather dry, well below average in most sites throughout the state. So something to keep in mind, this early onset typically has over the last at least 30 years uh, equated to above average precipitation during from July 1st through September 15th. Here's a quick look at the Climate Prediction Center's July through September outlook, and they're using a lot of this forecast based on dynamical prediction models. Uh, they use stats that I've shown here, and again showing uh, the above chances for above average uh, rainfall during the month, and then equal chances for above or below average temperature. Why do warmer than average sea surface temperatures result in greater than greater chances for above average precipitation and that that's answered in the moisture availability in this area it does change this subtropical and tropical convection changes the overall upper level pattern somewhat but the main reason is if we have any sort of southerly component any sort of monsoon surge can bring up a lot more moisture than average when this area of the eastern pacific is warmer the surface waters are warmer than average we get more evaporation into the lower atmosphere we also get more in the way of deeper convection so you you have a mid and upper level moisture is increased as well uh, so anytime you can increase the moisture in the source region that you're drawing from it's going to equate at least for New Mexico, it's equated to above average precipitation and just about every year when this region was above average, the sea surface temperatures were above average. It's all about the SSTs. Uh, Hurricane Amanda is any indication things are certainly looking up with regard to low level moisture availability. Uh, it's showing that the waters are above average, some would argue well above average. It's resulted in the Strongest May hurricane in recorded history. Um, there wasn't a lot of ship traffic down in this region of the world, but since the satellite era, it is the strongest hurricane on record in the East, Eastern Pacific Ocean Basin. Quick look here at uh, how is it that we fare well during July through September with both weak to moderate, moderate and strong El Nino events. And this may shed some light on that. Typically with the strong events, the image on the left, we've got a strong monsoonal plume. The upper low off the Pacific Northwest coast is much stronger than average. The upper level high, the four corners high as we refer to, although it a lot of times pushes east of New Mexico, is stronger than average. So there's a strong southerly, what we call monsoonal flow that develops. That southerly flow is stronger than average. Uh, then if we turn to the week to moderate to moderate El Nino events, the upper low off the Pacific Northwest coast is much weaker. Uh, you're talking on the order of, what is that, 34 meters in height difference. So the, the upper low is much weaker. The upper high is, is weaker as well. The monsoon circulation. This, is, this help explains why Arizona doesn't do as well because that strong southerly flow that's apparent there on the left is weakened. We get what appear to be stronger southerly pushes that occur during these years and also more in the way of easterly waves. As the upper level high is weaker in that area. We're also more unstable. The weaker than average upper level high is also equates to cooler than average at about 18,000 feet in the atmosphere. So we're more unstable. Uh, storms can uh, fire up a little bit higher. Uh, it's easier for them to get going. Uh, here's a summary. Again, a lot of text, but the main takeaway is that second bullet, the probability for above average July 1st through September 15th of 2014 precipitation is greater to much greater than average. Not saying we're going to have above average to well above average precipitation, but the odds, the odds definitely favor above average precipitation. If you look back at similar 
scenarios in the eastern Pacific Ocean. The equatorial Pacific Ocean, when we had PDOs that were positive, whether they were short-lived, as long as they occurred during the spring and summer months, and you had a developing El Nino, which looks at least to be weak to moderate, too strong, we did well uh, since 1980. And I suspect uh, farther back than that, every site, nearly every site in the state was above average during the July 1st through September 15th period. Again, my name is Andrew Church. You can send me an email if you have any, if you would like any further information and or have a question, andrew.church at noaa.gov. Thanks for joining us.